The concept I've been exploring is topic modeling with a focus on text analysis with latent theory play allocation. Topic modeling is a method of computational statistics that tries to find patterns in a collection of text. Topic modeling is especially useful when you're dealing with many text documents, too many to read through. In this situation, a topic model can give you the important themes of the documents and also an idea of how the documents are related to each other. In this presentation, I'll give background on the Dirichlet distribution, which plays an important role in LDA, hence the name latent Dirichlet allocation. In particular, we'll visualize the Dirichlet distribution and sample from it. We'll also go over the document generation process in LDA. We'll then discuss two techniques a parameter estimation in LDA. And then we'll talk about some of my results when I performed LDA on some literary texts. We'll conclude by talking about some future areas of inquiry. Let's begin with the Dirichlet distribution. A Dirichlet random variable has K dimensions and a k dimensional parameter alpha. Each component of alpha must be non-negative. The support of a Dirichlet random variable is the k minus one simplex. So what's a simplex? A simplex has points with each component being non-negative and summing to one. On this slide, we show the first four simplexes. We see that the zero simplex is a point, the one simplex is a line segment, the two simplex is an equilateral triangle, and the three simplex is a tetrahedron. The PDF of the Dirichlet distribution with parameter alpha is also shown at the bottom of this slide. In the PDF, we see the uppercase Greek letter gamma, which denotes the gamma function. To give some intuition on the Dirichlet distribution, we now visualize it. We plot three-dimensional Dirichlet random variables, since we can visualize them in two dimensions. On the left of this slide, we've plotted the Dirichlet distribution with parameter 555. Observe that this Dirichlet distribution has its greatest density in the center of the simplex. On the right of this slide, we've plotted the Dirichlet distribution with parameter 1 fifth, 1 fifth, 1 fifth. Observe that this Dirichlet distribution has its greatest density and the corners of the simplex, which we see by the yellow in the corners of the simplex. From these visualizations of the Dirichlet distribution, we see that having a Dirichlet parameter alpha with each component larger than one results in most of the distribution's mass being in the center of the simplex, where each component of the Dirichlet random variable has approximately the same value. On the other hand, having the Dirichlet parameter alpha with each component less than one results in most of the distribution's mass being in the corners of the simplex with one component of the Dirichlet random variable being close to one and the remaining components of the Dirichlet random variable being close to zero. Now that we have visualized Dirichlet distribution, we now sample from a Dirichlet distribution. A sample from a k-dimensional Dirichlet distribution defines a categorical distribution. This is because a sample from a k-dimensional Dirichlet 
distribution is a k-dimensional vector whose components are non-negative and add up to one. This defines a probability distribution over k categories. On this slide, we sample from three Dirichlet distributions. I'd like to bring your attention to the plot on the left, where we sample from the Dirichlet distribution with parameter 111. From this plot, we see that the Dirichlet distribution with parameter 111 is in fact a uniform distribution. We now investigate what happens when each component of the Dirichlet parameter is not equal. We see from the plot on this slide that this results in a Dirichlet distribution which is no longer symmetric about the center of the simplex. Now that we have given some background on the Dirichlet distribution, we now begin discussing LDA, where the Dirichlet distribution plays a prominent role. Recall that LDA stands for latent Dirichlet allocation. We've discussed the Dirichlet part of LDA. We now will discuss the latent part of LDA. In LDA, we are given a set of documents called a corpus. Each document contains a certain number of words. These words and documents are our observed data. Now each word in a document is a member of a certain topic, which is a variable we cannot observe directly. And each topic has a distribution of words, which we also cannot observe directly. And each document has a distribution of topics, which we also cannot observe directly. These are the latent variables, which we use inference to try to estimate. We now tell the story of how a corpus is generated in LDA. This is the heart of LDA. To create a corpus, before filling your corpus with words, you have to create a configuration for your corpus. You have to decide how many topics you want your corpus to have, how many documents there will be, and the number of words there will be in each document. You will also need to decide a vocabulary, the set of possible words for your corpus. Once you have configured your corpus, now choose the parameter alpha and the parameter beta, which will be used in filling the corpus with words. At last, you are ready to fill the corpus with words. Go through the documents one at a time to generate a word for the current document, sample a topic from the current document's distribution of topics. Once you have obtained a topic, sample a word from the selected topics distribution of words. Insert this topic into the current document. Repeat this procedure to generate all the other words in the current document. And then repeat this procedure to generate a document, the remaining documents for the corpus. Let us now bring back an observation about the Dirichlet distribution. We stated that having here, we stated here on this slide that having each component of the Dirichlet parameter alpha greater than one results in most of the distribution's mass being in the center of the simplex, with each component of the Dirichlet random variable having approximately the same value. On the other hand, Having each component of the Dirichlet parameter alpha less than one results in most of the Dirichlet distribution's mass being in the corners of the simplex, with one component of the Dirichlet random variable being close to one and the remaining components being close to zero. Now, in the context of sampling a distribution of topics from a Dirichlet distribution, having larger components of alpha will often result in a document 
which has a topic distribution where several topics have large probabilities. On the other hand, having an alpha with smaller components will often result in a document which has a topic distribution where one topic has very high probability and the rest of the topics have very low probabilities. Now, when people write documents, documents tend to be about just a few topics rather than about many topics. And so having an alpha with smaller components may better reflect how documents are generated by people. We now give an example of how to generate a corpus in ODA to see how this process works. In this example, we have four topics, six documents, with each document having the number of words specified for in the table at the top. Our vocabulary will consist of 14 words also specified in the table. We set the Dirichlet parameter alpha to be 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, an arbitrary choice. The Dirichlet distribution with this parameter will be used to sample the distribution of topics for each of the six documents. Now, for the sake of this example, we assume the distribution of words for each of the four topics is known in advance. And we give the four distributions in the bottom left table. Based on the distributions of words for each topic, we can say that topic one is an animal themed topic. Topic two is an astronomy themed topic. Topic three is a furniture themed topic. And topic four is a color themed topic. Now, we sample the distribution of topics for each document, and we present the six resulting distributions in the bar chart on the bottom right of the slide. In this bar chart, the four topics are represented by four different colors, and the six documents are labeled on the x-axis. We Now that we have determined the necessary ingredients we can populate the corpus with words, but we do not show the output of that here. We have discussed how to generate a corpus given the model parameters. Now we are interested in reversing the process. How do we determine the model parameters given the corpus? We cannot solve this problem exactly it is intractable. Therefore, we must approximate a solution. For this problem, we discuss two approaches. The first approach uses sampling to perform inference. The second approach uses optimization to perform inference. We now present the first approach to parameter estimation for LDA, Gibbs sampling. The idea is that we change the topic assignment of one word in the corpus at a time. When we're trying to change the topic assignment of a word in the corpus, we pretend this word is not there and consider the distribution of topic assignments for this word. The information available to us are the words of the corpus and the topic assignment of all other words in the corpus, excluding the current word. From this information, we can generate a distribution of topics for the current word. And then we sample the topic, which we'll assign to this word. We then repeat this procedure for the next word in the corpus and continue repeating this procedure until the process has converged. This method is an example of collapsed Gibbs sampling since our sampling of the topic assignment for the current word is based only on the observed words and the topic assignments of the other words. The sampling does not depend on the distribution of topics for each document, nor does it depend on the distribution of the vocabulary for each topic. These variables have been integrated out. We now, 
try to give some intuition for Gibbs sampling in ODA with an example. Suppose we have a corpus with three documents, with each document being a paragraph. A current topic assignment of a word is indicated by the color of that word. We wish to sample the topic assignment of the word wise, which is circled and in red. To sample a topic assignment for this word, we first remove the current topic assignment for this word. We then sample the topic assignment for this word and assign this word to its new topic assignment, excuse me, to its new topic in green on the right. We repeat this procedure for each word of the corpus until convergence has been reached. We represent Gibbs sampling mathematically on this slide. The current word we are trying to sample the topic for is the nth word of the dth document. The expression here is the conditional probability that the current word is in the kth topic, given the topic assignments for all other words, excluding the current word, the words of the corpus, and the Dirichlet parameters alpha and lambda where lambda is the parameter for the Dirichlet distribution used to sample the distribution of words for each topic, which we, in our notation, were calling beta. Basically, the math here says that the probability a word is in a certain topic is proportional to how much that topic likes that word multiplied by how much the document of the current word likes that pop. We now present a run of the Gibbs sampling method on the corpus we generated for the example back on slide 11 to see how the method performs. The Gibbs sampling method performs quite well here. On the left, we show a plot of one of the distribution of words for a topic outputted by the Gibbs sampling method. In this plot, we see that planet, moon, sun, and star are the top words for this topic. And so this topic is the astronomy-themed topic. On the right, we plot the distribution of topics for each document. And the outputted distribution is quite similar to the true distribution. We now present the second method of parameter estimation for LDA, variational inference. As stated before, variational inference estimates the model parameters of LDA through optimization, while Gibbs sampling estimates the model parameters of LDA through Markov chain Monte Carlo. In estimating model parameters, we are really trying to estimate posterior distribution of the data. What this means is that we're trying to estimate the distribution of latent variables, which consists of the topic distribution for each document, vocabulary distribution for each doc topic, and topic assignment for each word based on the observed data, the corpus. In variational inference, as with the Gibbs sampling method, we try to approximate the posterior distribution. To do this, for variational inference, we select a family of distributions, and we pick the member of this family of distributions that best resembles the posterior distribution. Now in this problem, we are optimizing not just parameters, but rather distributions. And so techniques such as the EM algorithm or MLE may not be applied. So how do we go about optimizing a distribution? Well, we restrict ourselves to a family of distributions called variational distributions 
and seek the member of this family with the smallest distance from the posterior distribution. Now, how do we measure the distance between two distributions? We use a measure called kolbach leibler divergence as the distance metric. The formula, the formula for KL divergence for continuous distributions is at the top of this slide. Now, variational inference can be represented by the diagram at the bottom of this slide. In this diagram, the family of variational distributions is contained in the large oval. The true posterior is usually not a member of this family and so is located outside the oval. The posterior is represented by the probability of Z given X, where Z represents the latent variables and X represents the observed data. We seek the member of the family of variational distributions closest to the posterior with distance measured by KL divergence. We start with an initial guess for the variational distribution and through optimization, we, iteratively, we iteratively arrive at better and better approximations. Now, how do we perform this optimization? The math is outside the scope of this presentation, but if you are interested, please read the attached PDF where I give a derivation. One note I would like to make is since we do not know the posterior, we cannot compute the KO divergence between the posterior and a variational distribution. However, the KO divergence is equal to negative elbow offset by a constant. The elbow is a scalar quantity, which stands for evidence lower bound, and it is a quantity we can compute. Therefore, we can maximize, excuse me, therefore we can minimize the KO divergence between the posterior and the family of variational distributions by maximizing the elbow. At each iteration of the variational inference algorithm, the elbow should increase, much like the likelihood in the case of the EM algorithm. This is derived and more fully discussed in the attached PDF. As a reference on this slide, I show the equation for computing the elbow. And on this slide, as a reference, I show the update equations for each iteration of variational inference for LDA. I would now like to make two observations comparing the Gibbs sampling and variational inference methods for LDA. First, running variational inference was much faster than running the Gibbs sampling method which is a general advantage of variational inference over Markov chain Monte Carlo. Variational inference tends to be faster. My second observation is that MCMC methods will give an unbiased estimate of the posterior, while variational inference will give a biased estimate since the posterior is outside the family of variational distributions. Now that we have given background on LDA and discussed the inference methods for LDA, Gibbs sampling and variational inference, we are now ready to use our methods on some literary texts. The texts we will be using are excerpts from Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, Walden by Henry David Thoreau, and short stories by O. Henry. Before we can analyze these texts, we have to clean these texts. To clean these texts, I remove stop words, which are very common words such as I or the, removed all punctuation, and converted the texts, which were strings, into lists of words. 
we now build our first corpus of literary texts. The corpus contains excerpts from Pride and Prejudice and Jane Eyre. These two books were written in the 1800s by female British authors. On this slide, I present the results of a run of LDA with Gibbs sampling with two topics. In this run of LDA, LDA identified each book as its own topic, with the first topic corresponding to Jane Eyre and the second topic corresponding to Jane Austen, its Pride and Prejudice. This example shows how LDA was able to clearly differentiate Pride and Prejudice from Jane Eyre. We now perform LDA on this corpus again with Pride and Prejudice and Jane Eyre, but this time with 10 topics. Here is part of the output generated by LDA with the variational inference. There are three topics which I was able to interpret. One topic had top words including coach, door, carry, quarter, trunk, and drove, which I interpreted as a travel theme topic. Another topic had top words including day, time, clock, night, and hour, which I interpreted as a topic about time. Another topic had top words of tree, light, moon, fields, hay, sun, and woods, which I interpreted as a topic about nature. The remaining seven topics I found more difficult to interpret. I also analyzed the two other texts, by O'Henry and Thoreau with LDA, and these results are in the notebook. However, I often found the results outputted for these texts to be more difficult to interpret. We conclude this presentation with some next steps and future areas of inquiry. I'm curious about how to select the optimum number of topics to use an LDA. In my analysis, I decided the number of topics arbitrarily, but I would like to explore a more objective method, such as perplexity score. I also would be interested to see how LDA would perform on a larger data set. In my analysis, I used a small data set with just a few texts, and I wonder if clearer patterns would emerge if I used more texts. Also, one method I came across but did not have time to explore was stochastic variational inference, which can help speed up variational inference so it can be used on very large data sets. I would also like to explore variational inference where other methods, where, excuse me, where other measures of distance besides KL divergence are used. This concludes the presentation. Thank you for watching.